Tiffany, you're a first-generation American-born Chinese who's super passionate and dedicated to your art. But your story is worth telling, not just because you're super talented, but because you recently learned how to embrace your culture, something you struggled with for most of your life. If you could describe your journey using just one word, what would it be? I would say incomplete. I feel like there's so much more I want to do and I'm always seeking out new experiences and <clears throat> always just looking for the next thing to do and still figuring it out, but definitely like there's more to come. <laughs> Multi-talented, versatile, and full of energy, New York City-based artist Tiffany Chow is currently highly inspired by the diverse city around her. But it wasn't always that way. Growing up in northern New Jersey in a predominant homogenous Caucasian area, the lack of culture exposure she had growing up was evident. I grew up in northern Jersey and it was like very homogenous, predominantly white suburbia, so there wasn't too much to do. Um, you know, we would just go hiking, a lot of nature -y stuff. But in terms of like cultural diversity, there wasn't really much of that. So you weren't exposed to a lot, right? No, not really. Um, like my parents would bring us back to, they're from Taiwan and they would, you know, fly us back when we were younger. So I would be exposed in terms of like their native country, but back where I grew up, there wasn't much of that. And they moved here pretty young as well, in their 20s? In their late 20s, early early 20s, they came here for grad school. They met while they're in New York. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did they talk to you a lot about their culture? How much exposure did you get? Yeah, they 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 do. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they inst Mandarin is my first language. Um, they instilled like, you know, traditional values, like respecting your elders, all that, and they would, tell us like what they didn't grow up with and just to appreciate what we have too. But being brought up in the neighborhood you're in, you didn't get a lot of people with the same. Yeah, so that was kind of a struggle for me because them not being familiar with the American traditional culture would be tough growing up because like all my friends, they just had such different upbringings. So it was hard to relate and it was really hard for me, for them to understand me as well. So it could be tough. I felt like um, I was trying hard to be, trying to identify with something that I really wasn't. Um, there was, I guess you could say, shame in a sense. I didn't really embrace my like background. Um, and yeah, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> I feel like that's such a common issue, you know, trying to find who you really are, and on top of it, trying to find, trying to relate with your cultural identity because, you know, yeah. there's, I mean, it's an issue trying to find yourself when you're young. Exactly, and, then, and you want to do what your friends do, but then they don't understand why you can't do certain things, and so, and then you end up having, like, arguments with parents, and it just, I had a whole rebellion stage. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> A very well-rounded artist with true talent overflowing towards so many directions such as music, painting and photography, Tiffany realizes that having moved to New York has had a major impact not only on her personal life and self-esteem, but also affected her confidence towards her artistic abilities. I moved here about a couple of years ago mm -hmm. um, for a job and it's been amazing. The city is awesome, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. It's a huge melting pot. Um, you're never bored, everything is so <laughs> convenient. And then what about stereotypes? Because, you know, New York, so much diversity. Mm -hmm. Jersey, not so much. Right, right. Certain areas of Jersey, I should yeah. say. But stereotypes are pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. Have you had to deal with certain stereotypes that bothered you or watch other people deal with them? It's kind of silly, but um, in elementary school, mm -hmm. when you're just like hanging with your friends, we'll just like joke around and be like, oh, you would look cute with this guy. Mm -hmm. They'd always match you with like the token Korean guy because he's like the only <laughs> Asian guy there. That really bothered me. Like, why do you have to put me in into a category of Asians, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much like the one thing you remember. <laughs> it really stuck out to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who that was. 
I hear a lot from a lot of people that I interview that it bothers them that they're expected to be smart. You know, they're expected mm. to be intellectual. But I think that, I mean, that's not a negative stereotype, but still I feel like stereotypes generally are exactly. not. Exactly. And if you're not, yeah. if you don't excel in math or science, then it's like, it's, yeah. they'll judge you for that too, because you're supposed to be at yeah. a certain standard. Absolutely. And when did things start turning around for you? I would say college. Mm-hmm. I feel like college is a strange time. It's a way for everyone to just grow and be independent. And so just leaving home in, in itself um, helped. Where did you go to college? So I went to SUNY Purchase for a year and a half. I studied um, drawing and painting in their uh, program. And then I transferred to Rutgers for a liberal arts degree and then went into grad school after that. So do you think that being more immersed into an artistic world, you know, having a closer relationship with arts kind of made you more comfortable with yourself? Growing up, I've always been exposed to the arts, so yeah. I've always appreciated it. Um, going to an art school exposed me to so much more um, phenomenal prof- professors, really talented students. Yeah, and I mean, that's what you were passionate about. About yes. to begin with, right? Yeah. So, was there like a specific moment that you saw things changing that you like started realizing, oh, you know, I don't care anymore? Mm-hmm. Whatever. It was never not caring. It was, I didn't really fit in there. I felt out of place. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I also kind of lost confidence in my art- artistic abilities. And I think this goes back to the Asian culture of always comparing yourself to others because I feel like I wasn't as good enough as other people. And I think with that combined with not really feeling comfortable in the environment, I kind of took the more practical route. And at the same time, I wasn't majoring, I wasn't studying graphic design and that's where it's more lucrative. I was doing painting and drawing and so I just decided to take a safer route, major in psychology. But even with, and then that's why I transferred and went to Rutgers instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even after that, I still, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I just kind of, I just went to grad school and did my dual masters. After a long struggle to learn how to embrace her cultural identity, a problem pretty common in this mixed country and the world we live in, Tiffany managed to not only turn a hurdle into something positive, but also a source of enlightenment by volunteering in Chinatown with New York Cares, formerly known as Chinatown Manpower Project. I wanted to be involved and give back and just immerse myself. And so this this was a great opportunity and it's just a great way to just learn more about my culture and like some of the stories I hear are just pretty pretty like moving too um and they all range you know everyone has different experiences and it just makes me appreciate with what I have too and like what my parents went through to get here do you have anything to share like anonymous you know yeah like any... yeah so like there are some volunteers that are still struggling it's it's really tough to move here in a different country not knowing the language that's the biggest thing the language barrier and so there's definitely struggles with that and then just other people that are working so hard making not that much money but just sending it back to support their families back home living conditions are also a lot of times not that great right? mm-hmm. and it's i mean a lot of times you hear in the news and everything but if you're actually talking to someone i feel like the level of personal connection you feel is completely different, right? Yeah, and you hear of people that come here and then I ask them like how the experience has been and if they're happier here or back home and they just say back home, but it's I feel like they don't really have a choice. So it's, yeah. it's tough. And I mean, a lot of people that I have met at least feel a sense of gratitude that a lot of times people here take for granted because everyone here has, for sure. you know, they've had everything ever since they can remember. And mm-hmm. when you don't have something, then you put things in perspective. Totally. Yeah. 
After touching all those topics, we were ready for a change in our surroundings, so we headed to Tiffany's room, where her creative artwork fills every wall and every corner with brightness and fun. You like to draw, you like to take pictures, to write music, to play instruments, and to paint, and the list goes on. What about art do you love so much? What speaks to you the loudest? Tell me about everything. How did it all start? <laughs> it started when I was really young. My um, mom had me sign up for art classes. So I was painting pretty young. Like Looking mm -hmm. back, I'm surprised at how young I was when I did it. But I don't rem remember much of the te it was like a Chinese teacher. I don't remember her teaching really. I just remember like painting. Mm -hmm. But I've always like taken art in elementary school all the way to high school, and I was in studio art for that. And so it's always been a part of my life. So many different forms. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into so many different things? I think it's just like a way of escapism. It's you know, with music especially. Mm -hmm. Um, that is something that I, I can't live without. Just always listen to music when I was young and was just a way to just escape from reality, um, to like re relax or from angry and just helps with that. And then with, with art, I just love creating. I love seeing the final product. They're pretty different forms of expression though. How do they relate in your opinion? Yeah, so I feel like um, each medium just fills a different need mm -hmm. in a sense. With music, it's very, it's more flexible. It's something I can do on the go, either listening or just playing. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to relax and just to like have fun. With painting, like with fine arts, there's a little bit more structure around that. It takes a lot of diligence and motivation because just the prep that goes into it too. Which one would you pick if you had to stick <laughs> with something? Would it be music because of the yeah. you know Ooh, that's a relaxing aspect right, of it? Right. What would it be? That's a tough one. <laughs> I I'm not sure if I can pick one. And going back to the creative process, explain to me a little bit how it works. First, where do you get the inspiration? What are some sources of inspiration that you have that you find mm -hmm. in realistic, physical terms? Right. Where do you go to find inspiration? Right. What are some things that you do? It comes from many different places. First and foremost, what's easiest? Heartbreak, obviously. You know? <laughs> um, others, <It's> <laughs> right. Um, others would be just seeing art, whether it's in galleries or like street art, surrounding myself with people that are really passionate about what they do is also a form of inspiration. I love just speaking, like meeting people that are doing what they, or do what they love. Um, I find that very inspiring. Um, also, what else? Just my travels, mm -hmm. like with the horses that was from traveling to Mexico. Um, I went to a horse, uh, uh, a farm with a bunch of horses, mm -hmm. and they were just like puppies. They were just so lovable. So I took a million pictures, and that's where I got my inspiration from. I personally love them. They're like just so bright and full of life, like full of fun. Thank you. But at, at the same time, you have some stuff that I've seen that it's pretty dark in terms of paintings and even songs, you know, so I can definitely see different, a, a big variety in terms yeah. of what you have. Yeah, I feel like just inspiration comes from all over. So explain it to me a little bit. If you find your inspiration, you know, you feel something that, I mean, you come across something that mm -hmm. inspires you, how does the creative process go from there? You know, if you have a medium of choice from right. that point. I think once I'm inspired, I just like immediately like put it down on paper and just like go right to work. Mm -hmm. I just. Do you know it if it's going to turn into a paint or into a yeah. song or like how how does how does it happen? I think that comes first if I want to paint or play music. Do you ever just play without having anything? You know, just play the guitar for instance without having 
any words down just yeah like yeah relaxation. definitely and it, that's where it comes from too mm -hmm. um like the creative process so there's i wanted to write this song and i would just it was actually just me just strumming a few chords and then i just started like just making up lyrics and then it just kind of formed into a song Tiffany sang an original song to us, composed by her, using her own heartbreak as inspiration. But music to her certainly seems like lots of fun. A quick look at her YouTube videos and you'll find Tiffany and her friends having a blast. If you could describe to me, put your artistic work into words. Mm -hmm. For me or for someone who wanted to find out about your work but wasn't looking at it, mm -hmm. how would you describe it? I would say it's very vibrant, lively, fun, a little playful. And I feel like that would vibe most with the horses. 
-hmm. But I just love bright colors. Just want to be happy. <laughs> Is that an element that you have to have when you're creating something? Or... Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with painting, I really like the, the colors aspect. And what about with your writing, for instance? Because the song that you just played was sort of right. darkish. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it was through a, a heartbreak and it was very emotional, so you can definitely sense that in the song. And I mean, with words, I feel like it's easier to get more mellow too, right? Mm -hmm. Right. When she's not jamming with her friends, volunteering, or devoting time to her own many forms of original art, Tiffany is probably at her daytime job, managing accounts at an advertising agency. I see some stuff that your company does, and I don't know how much she, of your own effort goes into it, mm -hmm. but it seems like a lot of fun, though. It's Yeah, no, it's a great environment. It's really supportive. We, we all get along. It's a, it's a really fun environment. I, they're just great people. And how much do you get to actually create in terms of material, in terms of, you know, side work, in terms of your own passions on top of it, on top of managing your own full-time position mm -hmm. and commuting home and yeah, getting your own it's, stuff done? It's, it takes, it takes time and time management to do all that. Um, like just creating my site, that's something that I've been wanting to do for years now. I've just been putting it off just because of life and work, so it's been tough, but um, I've finally been able to like just manage my time and just dedicate a certain amount of time devoted to my website. And speaking of your website, that's brand new, you just came out with it, and you have a lot of material there, a lot of content. How long did it take for you to collect all of the stuff that you have up mm -hmm. there? A lot of it is, there's some pretty old pieces. Mm -hmm. There's like one from high school. Um, but a lot, the, I would say the majority is more recent, more recent work. So if you had to put a number to it, how much would you say you get to, you know, just creatively speaking, you get to do in a month or mm -hmm. average? It, it varies. Yeah. It really varies based on how I'm, and exactly and how I'm feeling. and. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And with the website, do you have a specific goal and end goal with it, or do you um, well, just with the, with the website, I'm just happy that I'm able to share it with the world. It would be pretty awesome to get like commission pieces too, but I'm just I'm like really happy that it's out there. Out of the categories that you have on your website right now, because you have um, some of the photographs that you've taken, the paintings, the horses, and um, cards, uh, just different things that you have done, music. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite thing that you want to stick to and that you want people to really look at and focus on? Probably painting. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, and what about future projects? Anything professionally, creatively that mm -hmm. you want to accomplish anytime soon or that? So much. Yeah? Give me a few things. I'm still figuring it out myself. That's a great question. No, that's just, I, I definitely want to create more. Um, that's something that I am figuring out what, though. We can still look out for more pictures yeah, and more, more paintings, come. right? Definitely, yeah.